Hello and welcome on Aviators YTV. I'm Hino Pilot and in this two-part episode, we will take a look at the connection settings and main menu of Brunner's software CLS2SIM. Let's get into it. If this is the first time that you open CLS2SIM, you will be greeted by some warnings for you to read. Click on continue to move on. You are now looking at the main menu of CLS2 SIM. Consider this menu as the center of operation of all Bruna products you may own. Do not click on connect yet. I know that it's very tempting, it's right there. Right there, highlighted in blue, but don't touch that mouse. Please bear in mind that at the time of this recording, CLS2 SIM is at version 5.1.9. There is a possibility that some elements have been removed, renamed, or deleted completely by the time you see this video. Don't hesitate to leave a comment or join our Discord if you need any help. The first thing you want to do before using your Brunner product is to select which simulator you intend to fly on today. Go to File and click on Settings. You are now looking at the connection settings. This is the place where you can choose the type of connection you want to use between your hardware and your computer. In my case, which is the case of most people, I have plugged my base simply with the provided USB cable into a USB 3.0 socket on my computer. CLS2 SIM has an automatic detection feature that will try to choose the appropriate connection type for you, depending on which cable plugged at the back of the device. This menu is also where you will tell CLS2 SIM which simulator you want it to communicate with. Every time you change simulators, you will have to come back to this menu to make the change. I repeat, every time you change simulators, you have to come here and pick the appropriate simulator option. The rest of the settings are optional settings per simulator option. Then a few settings if you are using your device with remote control. The last interesting bit is at the very bottom. I would recommend that you check the box, check for updates at startup, so that your CLS2 SIM application is always up to date. Once you have chosen your simulator, TCS World in my case of course, click OK. Now is the time to click on connect. When you do, CLS2 SIM will both connect to your hardware and calibrate it. Do not interrupt the calibration process and let the hardware move freely. Yep, that thing is going to wiggle around for a sec or two. Just be patient. Note that if the device is connected, you won't have access to the connection settings until you click on disconnect. The settings options will be grayed out. Looking at the menu from top to bottom, the first section is a drop-down menu that allows you to select which profile you have made that you want to apply to the device. Out of the box, there will only be a default profile option in there. To the right of that drop-down menu is the Profile Manager button. This opens the Profile Manager menu that we will cover in the second part of this episode in a different video. Moving down, the next section, named Control Loading System, is your device status indicator. Each small square corresponds to an axis. One Brunner device can have multiple axes. In my case, I own the CLS-E joystick base. Therefore, I have both an elevator axis and an aileron axis connected. If I had bought and connected the CLS-E rudder, I would have the rudder square illuminated as well. The color of the squares indicates the connection status of each axis. Gray for disconnected, yellow for connected but not initialized, green for connected and ready, and red for fault. The two to three letters following the name of each axis gives you a bit more detail about the status of each axis. The legend of each color and letters is located just below in the legend section. 
In essence, if your axis is grey, that means you either haven't pressed connect yet or your device is not plugged in. If it is yellow, that means your device is plugged in, but the calibration hasn't been done yet. If it is green, you are good to go. If it is red, however, contact Brunner to know what to do with your device. Moving down again, to the left is the hardware section. This is where you press connect to enable your device. Once you have pressed connect, three buttons are available. Disconnect will disable the connection between your device and CLS2 SIM. If you wish to switch simulators, you have to press that button to make the connection settings available again. Init will calibrate your device. Note that this is only useful if the axes are colored in yellow in the status section. Stop will deinitialize your device. Note that it won't disconnect it it will switch its status from green to yellow. That means the connection settings won't be available again by pressing just that button. Moving to the right, you will find the simulation section. This is where you can monitor if your simulator is communicating properly with CLS2 SIM. Note that you will often need to start a flight before seeing any data displayed in that section. Simply being in the main menu of DCS, for instance, won't display anything here just yet. The final section at the bottom is the logging section. This is where CLS2 SIM will display the current processes, problems and errors or executions made by the application. Note that we haven't described the very top of the main menu as these options are pretty straightforward. In this video, we have covered the fundamentals to understand the connection settings and the main menu of CLS2 SIM. In the next video, CLS2 SIM Fundamentals Part 2 Profile Manager, we will take a look at how to create and configure profiles and see a demonstration of the settings on my CLS-E joystick base. In the meantime, feel free to leave a thumbs up and a follow to our YouTube and Twitch channels. Join our Discord and we'll see you next time. Aviators out.